Okay, it's 4.30. I want to begin by thanking everybody for being here, teachers, administrators, central office. Um, I want to make sure that I respect your time. And so I'm going to start on time. Um, today's presentation is specifically over the teacher incentive allotment. Uh, hopefully you had some time to review Dr. Diane Davis Frost a letter that was attached to an email that I sent to the principals last week. If not, um, you can get that letter from the principals. That letter provides an overview of the teacher incentive allotment, how it started, what it is, and how it's going to impact student achievement in our district. Um, having said that, I want you to know that we'll be adhering to the, to the 3B presentation rules. Uh, for those of you who don't know the 3B presentation rule, um, that's I'm going to be clear with the presentation. I'm going to be concise with the presentation. Then I'm going to be gone uh, with the presentation. So again, respectful of y'all's time. I understand um, everybody's day uh, at this time of the year is a lot um, in education. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, the teacher and center allotment is going to be uh, what we'll be discussing today. And there's going to be four deliverables, four objectives. The first one that we're going to be uh, discussing is uh, the purpose for the teacher incentive allotment. How did this get started? Uh, where did this come from? Um, and, how it's going to, and how is it going to impact students in our district? Number two, we're going to take a detailed look on the teacher incentive allotment, uh, a detailed look into the teacher incentive allotment. Um, the third objective revolves around um, understanding as a group what it's going to take to gain a designation. And we'll detail uh, what a designation um, means in this presentation. But what it, what's it gonna take as a teacher? Because this is just for teachers to gain a designation in the Course Canada Independent School District, which differs from other districts based on each individual district's application. And the last um, objective for today, the last deliverable, uh, hopefully by the end of the presentation, we have a great understanding uh, of the teacher incentive allotment funding, how that works, and the district's individualized spending plan. Um, so um, hopefully that, that's going to be clear and concise uh, by the end of the presentation. So setting the purpose, um, the last legislative session, there was a lot of pressure from our community, from our state, from educational organizations to make sure that we were valuing teachers um, from a holistic perspective. One of the aspects that was fought so hard for was teacher compensation. For many years, uh, last year, this year, years before, um, teachers were underpaid and still are underpaid. But there, were, there was a lot of pressure in the last legislative session um, from, from state organizations, from community involvement, to make sure that there was a plan in place for teachers to get paid more, okay? So with that type of pressure, the last legislative session did set aside an allocation uh, to provide just that, more compensation for teachers. But obviously, uh, in dealing with money, and uh, whenever a, a district receives money, there's usually 99.9% .9 of the time, there's usually strings attached to it. One of the strings that was attached to uh, the teacher incentive allotment was that the state was going to provide and is providing those funds, those extra compensation funds for teachers with the understanding that every district in the state of Texas that decides, that chooses to take advantage of the extra monies there, they were gonna come up with an evaluation system, a fair and accurate evaluation system based on multiple measures to get a definite accurate rating um, for the teachers, which was going to coincide, interrelate with the designation that that teacher was to receive. Uh, the evaluation data, so, so their understanding, their, their um, request for an evaluation, a strategic evaluation system was because they knew that if a district um, was to create an evaluation system, then they could use that evaluation da data uh, for many things, uh, staffing, strategic staffing, um, human, ca human capital decision, and those go hand in hand. Uh, when it comes to uh, placing teachers, highly effective teachers at the most neediest campus, we've done this in, in this district. So we were ahead of the game 
um, when it came to that aspect of selecting highly effective teachers and placing them at the most neediest campuses. So that's a part of the evaluation system that a district had to show uh, and has to show the TEA um, in their application process. Professional development, you can use the um, information, the data gathered from the strategic evaluation system that a district creates um, for professional development. Where are our um, students needing, or I'm sorry, our staff needing the most uh, developing? What areas um, do we need to support the staff to make sure that trickles down to the students and ultimately impacts the students? Because at the end of the day, the teachers impact the students the most. Uh, followed right closely behind uh, are, are the principals. So the teachers are the most impactful. Various research says that, followed by uh, the principals. Um, compensation, um, gathering the right information, the right data will lead to um, um, higher compensation for those effective teachers. Career pathways, which teachers are uh, the experts in, in curriculum and instruction? And if, and if we can kind of designate which teachers are uh, the most effective, then we can create a career pathways that will ultimately help the, the, the district as a whole, not just their classrooms. Uh, hiring, of course, I've hit on that. Uh, and then supporting and retaining the best possible teachers. You know, if a teacher feels valued, um, not only um, by the principal or the district, um, by, but by everybody, if they feel valued and if they feel uh, well compensated, obviously the, the, the teacher retention rate um, it, it's, it's going to show that. So this is what they found out. The, the re, these researchers that um, were evaluating the implementation of strategic evaluation systems, they found out three key concepts. Any district that has implemented an effective strategic evaluation system have proven the following um, uh, denotations. There's been an increase in retention, there's been an improve in student outcomes, and uh, there has been a closing of academic and opportunity gaps. But when you think about it, um, that's an obvious. Uh, with a lot of research, I always, always, always laugh because they, they do these these months and years long studies, and you're like, well, yeah, we knew that already. But obviously, you need data to make sure that it, that it's proven effectively um, in in science. But obviously, if, if we're going to have an evaluation system um, that measures certain things, they're going to get done. And, and that old saying, what gets measured, measured gets, gets done. I like to think of it, of it as what gets measured get, gets improved. Um, so those are the three um, denotations that have come from various uh, research studies in regards to um, uh, strategic evaluation systems. Similar to what I discussed earlier, um, whenever you do put an effective evaluation system into place, you're going to see these things. You're going to see an equity across the district uh, of effective teachers and effective school leaders at uh, the most neediest campuses. You're going to differentiate your PD based on your student needs. Uh, you, you're going to differentiate compensation. You're going to reward those high-performing teachers, and 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 good and good for that. You know they need to be rewarded. Um, and then identification of future campus leaders. If you're knocking it out of the ballpark and you can, you have the data to show that, um, then then we're looking at it as okay, they, they they can help. That's great that they're doing that in the classroom. But how can we increase the amount of students that are that have, that are getting that knowledge that that teacher is providing that class? How can we make that uh, more impactful um, in the district and improve teacher recruitment? Um, when, when you set up a system like they're doing here in the state of Texas um, and you designate teachers, recognize exemplary master, like we're going to discuss here in a little bit, when you designate those teachers, obviously, as a district, we're going to seek the master, teach, master teachers out. We're going to seek the exemplary. We're going to seek the recognize because that's going to be in their certificate. And obviously, uh, why would you not? You know, what we, we talk about. Um, recruiting the best teachers to the Course Canada Independent School District. We have great teachers right here. We have phenomenal teachers. Um, but why not increase the number of great teachers and effective teachers? Um, and one way we can do that is by seeing um, 
if they are recognized, if they are mastery, if they are exemplary, uh, which is detailed in their SPEC certificate or which will be detailed uh, for several of you in your SPEC certificate. Okay, introduction, that was the purpose. So that's the purpose of the evaluation system. Why is it, why is it important? What are the benefits for districts? Um, why, why would we even want to be in the evaluation system such as the teacher incentive allotment? That was, that was that piece. So introduction, like I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of pressure on the legislative, uh, on the last legislative session to increase teacher compensation. So the goal of the TIA, uh, of the TIA, uh, was to provide a realistic pathway so that our teachers could earn six figures. You know, um, there was a lot of, of talk about, you know, how, how can that be? How can the legislators get to that? Uh, can they get to that? Can they provide a pathway? And they did, and they did. They said, here's a pathway districts. If you wanna take advantage of it and you want your teachers to be designated, recognized exemplary or master and get paid extra, like y'all have been talking about for years that you need to put in the work, put in the application and work with your teachers and explain to them uh, the process of attaining these designations in your district in the Corsicana Independent School District because other districts uh, that are applying for this and not all are applying, there's several that aren't applying. We're applying because this is gonna help teachers. This is gonna help teachers and this is gonna compensate them for doing a great job. And the money's there. It's not a competitive grant. You're a lot of this money. Why would you not take advantage of it and, 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 and uh, support the teachers and gaining those des designations that are five year are valid for five years and carry them, that can be carried, that designation can be carried through the entire state of Texas. Now I'm not saying leave Corsicana when you leave, when you get that designation, please don't, <laughs> please don't. What I'm saying is if there's a family, maybe your husband's, you know, maybe he's a pastor and he got moved to um, East Texas and you're an exemplary teacher, that, that designation, you carry that designation to any district you go in, into uh, and they have to compensate you for that. So the district approval process, it's a, it's a two-step process. So as a district, we've been working on this application for a little bit over a year. Um, we started about a year and two months ago. And the way we started that was we compiled a, a district Teacher Incentive Allotment Committee that 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 um, central office campus teachers principals were involved in. Um, and then COVID hit, and we kind of had to kind of step back a little bit, take care of that business. But then we hit it hot and heavy uh, this year, um, uh, like in November, and we started meeting again, meeting with teachers, meeting with principals, meeting. We had a, a subcommittee, a board subcommittee that helped, reached out to Region 12 for help, uh, discussed. Uh, our plan with with TEA, let let them just kind of tell us any tweaks that we needed to make. So, so it's a long, arduous process to even complete the application. Um, but 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 our teachers deserve it. Y'all deserve it, especially um, for those individuals that are that want to participate in this because this is optional. You don't have to participate in this. As a teacher, you don't have to participate in this, but why would you not? Uh, you, you're gonna get T-test evaluated uh, for the most part. There's some of y'all that, that aren't uh, T-test evaluated based on your great results in the past and based on your tenure, but why would you not? You're gonna get T-test evaluated. You're gonna get student uh, growth data. Uh, you're gonna get a campus overall rating. Why would you not? Especially if you're a great teacher, you're gonna be missing out on some money, but that's your decision. So, so we apply. Uh, to the Texas Education Agency, they review it, they approve it, then they send it to uh, Texas Tech and Texas Tech measures the student performance growth. Um, after that, uh, they grant us approval of which teachers, after looking, after looking at the student data growth, which teachers uh, are designated as recognized exemplary and master. That's placed on their certificate and like I mentioned earlier, that designation follows them to whichever public school district in the state of Texas that they are working in. So the award amounts vary. The award amounts vary. Recognize it gets a different amount 
um, exemplary gets a different amount and master gets a different amount. And the amount of funding per teacher is this determined um, by the campus, not your classroom, but the campus socioeconomic need uh, and whether that campus is rural or not. So let's take a couple minutes, leaders, teachers, take a couple minutes to look at by campus where you're working and other campuses. The designations of recognized exemplary and master and how much extra amounts teachers at one of those campuses that gain that designation, that earn that designation receive or will receive. Let's take about two minutes to review that. So, so as a district, we're all school-wide uh, Title I campuses. We all meet that 40% 40 40 threshold of low-income students. However, by campus, we vary in regards to that percentage. We're all over that. We're all over 40% low-income, but we vary by campus. Carroll, uh, if I was a teacher at Carroll and, and I was, um, I'm just gonna put myself as master. <laughs> If I was a master teacher at Carroll, I would be receiving close to 23000 If throughout the school year, um, maybe I decided to move to uh, Fannin, um, that would drop. Um, my payment would be recalculated, and that would drop to seventeen. If I was a Collins Intermediate master teacher, um, I'd be receiving 20000 If I decided that the following year I wanted to go uh, to Mr. Johnson's campus at the middle school, um, that would decrease by a little bit. Okay. So what's our designation system? I wanna make sure I'm clear that this is for teachers only and discussing with, with the committees, uh, with the um, subcommittee, the board subcommittee, the um, teacher incentive allotment district committee uh, with the district um, committee that consisted of HR, uh, curriculum instruction, uh, 70s department, my department, um, it was denoted that we were going to spend 90% of those funds uh, on teachers. The allotment funds was to go to teachers. And a teacher must have, you can read for yourself there, a valid aspect certificate. One of those three would work. And they have to be coded as a teacher. You have to be in a classroom setting. So, so those are who are eligible um, from a personnel side of things. So we wanted to do a face and approach. We wanted to do a face and approach uh, because from, from our experience, uh, that's gonna be the most successful approach when dealing with such a massive initiative, such as this teacher incentive allotment. And when you have uh, that much money uh, with that many people, you want to make sure you get it right the first time. Um, you don't want to go all in and then have huge mistakes uh, and have to pay some monies back or um, upset any teacher. And we're going to try to minimize, minimize that, if not eliminate that, by implementing a, a phase 
one, two, and three approach. So let me kind of kind of explain what, what that means. So the data collection year, the upcoming year, is going to be a data collection year for reading and math teachers in our district. All schools, reading and math only. The following year, we're going to include um, um, science and social studies, those core content. The following year, we're going to include um, all core content teachers in all schools. And then third year, we're going to do all schools and all subjects. So what measures and weights will, will the district use in, in, in identifying uh, the data that we need? And, and ultimately, this data is going to designate teachers as recognized exemplary and master teachers. T-tests, 30% uh, in our model, 30% uh, of the weight is going to be T-test observations. That's going to be done by your principals. Uh, student growth, we're looking at 60 60%, STAR 40%, and MAP 20%. Um, and then campus overall rating as it relates to, to STAR 10%. As I mentioned earlier, the subcommittees, uh, the district committees, uh, the teacher input, you know, we could have broken this down into, um, into however we saw fit. Um, but still follow the guidelines uh, that the TEA provided. But we decided to go all in with teachers. 90% um, of the funds, the allotment funds, whatever's generated based on the designation system, 90% of those funds are gonna go to those teachers. And 10% of those funds are going to be with the, to the implementation of the teacher incentive allotment. 10% um, of those funds are going to go to uh, trainings that we're gonna need um, for um, the student growth component, 10% of those funds, same 10%, not additional, same 10% of those funds are going to go to um, summer trainings on to make sure that all the teachers, uh, all, all the principals, all the district admin are aware of this initiative uh, and are well versed in not only how, how to attain a designation, um, but also um, answer any question that that, that we may have from, from the teachers. How will these extra funds, how will this extra compensation work in conjunction with, with the, the way we pay right now with our salary schedule? It's not, it, it's not gonna replace the, the current salary schedule. You're still gonna get paid um, on the similar dates that, that we have right now next school year, um, every month. You're still gonna get paid um, what you get paid right now. These funds are, in addition to the district salary schedule. Keep in mind that, that, that the, the legislative group wanted to create a pathway to, to the six-figure salary for teachers. And this is it. This is it. Year one, uh, the TEA will notify districts of final designation and, and allotment. So, so if, if you go back, uh, you don't have to go back, Stephanie, but if you go back a couple of slides, and, and this will be posted, it, this, this recording will be posted um, online so you can uh, review if you would like or, or look at the PowerPoint slides. If you were to go back, um, the data capture year is next year. The data capture year is the 2021-2022 academic school year. The following year, the following year is when we know which teachers uh, gain the designation um, in allotment um, for, for the data capture year. So initial payout for the approved system will, will occur on or before September of 2023. Um, that should actually read, we're a September 1st district, meaning that our, our, our um, funds get approved by the board in August and September 1st is when we start um, spending the, the new funds. But um, that should actually read August because September 1st is when we start, I should actually read on or before August of 2023. And if you're, and if you're thinking, man, that's, Dr. A, that's a long time from now. Uh, it really isn't. When you look at the schedule, it's really not. You know, data capture years next year, and the final designation is, is close to that. So it's really not. Um, and again, this, this, this designation uh, that, that, holds, that holds for five, year, five years and is valid for five years, um, you can take that with you anywhere. We don't want you to. 
We want you to stay here, but you can take that with you anywhere. So the next steps, every teacher in our district is gonna receive a survey from Texas Tech University. Please fill that out. You're gonna receive that survey April 26th. You're going to receive a survey from Texas Tech University on April 26th. Please fill that out. The deadline for that completion, for, for the completion of that survey is May 14th. So you receive the uh, survey the 26th of April, you have until May 14th um, to complete that. As a district, we're gonna create space, uh, whether that's on um, our website or um, any method that we, that we can create for you teachers and for you principals where um, you can get questions, I'm sorry, you can get answers to your questions. And I'll go over a little bit more detail of that in a little bit, but we're gonna create a, a, a website page um, to where we have Q and A's, we have this recording, we have subsequent recordings of where we are with the process of the application. Uh, when did it get approved? Does it get approved? When does it go into effect? Uh, which teachers are um, eligible? Um, and, and obviously have the discussion principles of with your teachers uh, the the importance of participating in this, but also with the understanding that it, it's, it's optional. But why would you not want to participate in this um, with these extra compensation funds? Uh, there's going to be a plan. There's going to be a detailed plan in the summer. Uh, once we get the application approved, we can have those discussions with the campus pr principals and the campus principals can have discussions with the teachers uh, to support the school leaders and teachers to make sure this is successful to make sure this is successful. You know, one of the things that I've learned in education, you don't wanna mess with people's children and you don't wanna mess with, with, with uh, people's money. Um, and, and this has both. So um, we're, we're, we're phasing in, um, we're, go we're gonna start with phase one, we're gonna make it successful um, and we're gonna need your support to do that. Uh, with the understanding that we as leaders, district leaders are gonna provide every resource possible for you to make sure that the ones that want to participate are successful in this. And we're going to provide regular uh, teacher incentive allotment campus updates. And again, as I mentioned, the data capture year, the entire year, uh, the upcoming year is when we're going to gather that data for those teachers that are eligible of phase one. So this is important for you to know. As I mentioned earlier, communication is key. It's gonna be key to make this successful, the planning, the uh, presentations, the training for those eligible teachers. We have to have a concerted uh, effort to answer any or all questions, comments, or concerns that you teachers have. So for the first year and a half, um, possibly more, I wanna make sure that um, I answer and I'm the lead on this initiative. So we've created an email to start with to answer, and that email comes uh, to me, to answer any or all questions that you have in regards to the teacher incentive allotment or anything that I presented uh, to you today. Um, there's the email. Um, you can take it down, you can write it down. Just keep in mind that this presentation will be posted. And there's my, my phone number. And last but not least, uh, I want to talk about um, a, a great event that, that's coming up on Friday and Saturday, the Penguin Project. I, I, I'm sure you've seen some of that on social media. Uh, it, it's, it's a great opportunity for, for us as educators to see the progress of our students um, who receive services uh, for uh, their obstacles or disabilities, um, it would, it's a great opportunity for you to see students uh, that receive special education services at their best. I've been involved in this uh, Penguin project from day one. It's been a year and a half, a long year and a half of, of making sure that, um, that we provide the students to shine those students. Um, so what it is, for those of you who aren't aware, it's a, it's a one act play put on um, with with students that, that are special needs in coordination with peer mentors. I would invite you personally, I want to invite you personally to um, the showings. There's two showings, Friday and Saturday, April 16th and 17th at 7 p.m. It's free for us educators to show your ID 
you and you and your immediate family will get in for free. But um, it, it's it's an amazing opportunity. You know, I've been in administration now uh, close to ten years, and it's probably a top five, um, a top five memorable experience for me. Um, so I just invite you to come out April 16th and 17th, 7 p.m. Uh, on Friday and 7 p.m. on Saturday. Um, you'll be excited. You'll be glad you went, and, and we would love to see you there. Steph, will we go back to the, three, uh, to the uh, contact page? And I want to make sure I reiterate this. That's a lot of information that, I, that I've talked about today uh, in the last 30 minutes. Um, I want to make sure you reach out, feel comfortable enough to reach out to me, I feel comfortable enough to ask any question or all questions that you have. I want to make sure that we want to make sure this is successful. Uh, We're going to make this successful. Um, you need to communicate with us and, and, and I guarantee that we'll communicate back. Okay, 31 minutes. Um, I, was, I was hopefully clear. I was hopefully concise and uh, I'll be gone now. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, have a great rest of the day.